That's it. I'm no longer buying comic books. And wait a second. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up an order of comic books that I won off of Hip Comic from the seller Quality Comics. I had quite a run of auctions that I participated in in de December of 2022. I don't know if it was because of the holidays, uh, I had a little time off from work. I don't really know exactly why I participated in so many <laughs> participated. I just mean I, I bought a lot of books. And one of the places that I found that I feel like is very reasonable for participating in auctions is Hip Comic. And I realize that it is a, a marketplace style, but I pretty much am only bidding on auctions from quality comics. And the reason I do so is because I feel like there are some hidden gems in there, but it does take quite a while to examine the scans of the books and really figure out which books do I consider to be near mint. And by near mint, for quality comics, I'm conservatively putting these books in the range of an 8.5 to an 8.2 with an outside shot at 9.4. And then if I do end up grading the books and it's above 9.4, then even better. But what's happened now is I take a, a lot of pride in cataloging every book, grading every book, entering every book I purchase into my spreadsheets, into cover price and other sources. And I like to really catalog everything. I'm a data nerd and I just, it's just part of the hobby that I really like. I know it's very, very specific, but like, I like the fact that comic books are numbered. Like there's a serial number on a CGC slab certification. I, I like all of the, the numbering and the indicia and all of the details around comic books. But I also want to give myself enough time to really enjoy them. And what I've found is in sort of a flurry of bidding and auctions and purchasing over the last couple of months, I haven't given myself enough time to really go through and spend the kind of quality, pun intended, time with these books that I would like to. Now, let's be honest, the other reason is I would like to give my wallet a break. I've been spending a lot of money on comic books and want to make sure that the comics that I'm buying are a sound investment, that they have good value. And there is part of me that is excited about this, where I think that the easiest thing to do if you can afford a comic book is to buy it. To make the decision to say, I've got $5, it's a $5 book, let me see if I can negotiate it down to $4, and oh, I got a great deal, and I've acquired the book. I think that that's the easiest thing to do. Once you acquire the book, what you do with it next really is, it's a number of decisions. Are you going to put it in a fresh bag and board? Are you going to read it first? Are you going to flip it, try and sell it? Are you going to show it to somebody and try and explain to them how great this new book that you got is versus any of their other books and, and try and induce FOMO? I mean, there's lots of different things you could do with a comic Display it on a wall, get it slabs into CGC. There's lots of different things like how a comic book travels through your collection and what bin it's going to go into what or what pile is it going to sit on on your desk. While that whole process and that workflow is interesting to me, I have found that I have been buying more than I've been reading and cataloging and grading. And there's a little bit of relief that has come over me recently when I arrived at this decision to take a hiatus, to simply take a break from purchasing. Because for me, that is sort of the easy thing to do. I have a lot of different analytical tools at my disposal that I evaluate, and it's very easy for me to say, these are the best books at this particular online store or this resource or this set of eBay auctions or hip comic auctions, like these are the best books to buy and this is how much you should spend. To me, I've developed all of that to make the buying process really, really easy. But the handling of one's catalog and collection takes time. It, it helps build character and experience and knowledge about the hobby. And I really wanna focus on that for a while with the added benefit of 
giving my bank account a little bit of a break to let it breathe for a little bit. It's difficult for me right now because I still very, very much believe that we are in a collector's market. And I call it that instead of a buyer's market because I do feel strongly that collectors are gonna collect. And I'm not buying comics to buy and flip. I am buying them, acquiring them to collect them, to add them to my collection. So while this might not be the perfect time to take a break, I'm excited at the prospect of catching up with my orders and also coming up with some other different and creative ways to appreciate the books that I do have. And when you're ordering a lot of books from different places and they're all kind of coming in the mail, sometimes they run together a little bit. They don't feel as special. And I want to have that feeling again where if I'm placing an order or I'm acquiring a book, I want it to feel special. I want it to feel different. And I think recently for me, I just maybe overbuying has made even the, the best of books feel like Maybe they're competing with each other, and I want to take more time just to appreciate the books that I have, and also appreciate the orders that I've placed that I haven't opened yet. I'm going to continue to receive orders and go through them, but by taking a little bit of a break from acquiring and knowing that at some point I'm not going to be receiving any comic book orders, I can slow down and really appreciate the comics that I did order, and really understand why did I order them? How do they order them? What grades did they end up at? And how does that affect my purchasing going forward? So let me take a few moments to appreciate this order from Quality Comics. It is a set of books that I won at auction. And I feel like if the books grade out, I got pretty good deals on them. If you don't mind staying till the end of this video, I'll show you what I paid for them and compare the cost to acquire these books against fair market value for both raw copies and if I were to send them in for professional grading. So let's take a look at the comic books that I won. All right, here is that order from Quality Comics. They're located in Montgomery, Alabama. Sent USPS priority mail. Let's get this thing opened up. You know, I do a lot of uh, complaining about tape and I talk about how shipments are packed. Uh, that had nothing. It was a cardboard box and there were comics inside. Uh, that was it. There was a couple pieces of scotch tape holding the books together. And Quality Comics is saying, you know what? Our sturdy cardboard mailer and the bag and board, that's going to protect these books and they're going to get there. So here we go. Let's check it out. <laughs> I, I hope they're right. And before I start going through the books, again, just... Why did I select these books? Certainly just comparing the current bid with current fair market value, potential for grading and so forth. But when I looked at the scans online, to me, these books seem to have the best potential to kind of bust out of that 8.5 to 9.2 range that I talked about. I had been evaluating quality comics and really trying to grade every single book. And I even uh, shot a video of this where I'm, how I'm like assessing it and trying to assess the books quickly and everything because I didn't have a lot of data on them. Now their books are kind of grading out in the high eights, low nines. So then I just sort of not assume every book is an eight, five to nine, two. But what I'm doing is I give the book a quick assessment with an online scan. And if I don't see anything like really standing out, such as stains and tears and lots of color breaks on the spine and things like that, then I just throw it in an 8592. I run my calculation and then I spit out a max bid. I grab the max bid, I bid and then I set it and forget it and see if I win. And that's the way that I've been approaching quality comics going forward. And now let's look at the books that I won in this order. The first book, Avengers 41. Great Silver Age book, 12 cent cover price. And I'll take some of these out and take a look and why not start with this one? Just so we can see, you know, what was what did I spot? What was I looking for when I'm looking at those scans of the book online. And I'm trying to find copies where if we look at the spine, we're not seeing an abundance of color breaks. Typically a Silver Age book like this, and I do see some down here. Uh, I would say if I just sort of isolate this part of the book, that is pretty typical, I would say, of your, your average mid-grade copy. And I would expect that to kind of 
be the way that the book looks all over, but you could see it doesn't. Really, really sharp, nice edges here. Corner has a little bit of a, just a, just a tiny flap there, but not bad. This edge looks tremendous. Very, very nice. Strong, sharp corner, just a very, very slight color break there. Top looks okay, might need a little bit of a press. And then right on the G, what is that? I hope that is not a tear. And looks like it is not, but you can definitely see some discoloration, but just kind of an odd sort of like wrinkling of some sort that, yeah, it's not a tear, but you know, it, it, this is borderline high grade. It's, it's probably like upper mid grade, but strong colors. It's, I mean, we've got obviously sort of a, a gray scale going on here with this gargoyle on the front with the Avengers in color and then the darker background behind the trade. So a tough book to keep clean and, and keep intact with little to no color breaks, but looks pretty strong. Again, kind of upper mid-grade. And then this is what I would say is typical as well. There's just a mixture of some light dirt and very light foxing. Uh, and I think this is just, kind of, and I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're uh, laying all of the books in some sort of chemical or urine or something, but they're, all of these books have just some sort of yellowing to them, and you kind of have to just understand that you're just not going to get a, a 9-8 candidate of a Silver Age book from them, but I would definitely consider this to be a very, very strong, like I said, upper, upper mid-grade sort of copy. But as we open up, you kind of see this is, this is kind of the page quality, um, probably an off-white or off-white to white. I'm very happy with the condition of this one. Again, it's not probably not going to be a 9.4, but they don't list it as near mint anyway. So you know, it could be right around an 8, maybe, is probably where I would land on this. I don't know if it's if I can bump it all the way to an 8.5. I'm also, if I'm going to invest in a raw copy, I want to make sure it has really nice wrapping and presentation value. So I... My general assessment, sort of my my first impression of the book, is that it's a very solid around an 8.0. I mean, we could argue 7.5 to 8.5, somewhere around there. I don't believe this is a 9.0, but a book that I would be willing to give a very light cleaning to and, and a press just to get out a couple of things. A little, there's a little bit of curling happening right in here. Just, just if I could get that 0.5 grade bump. I would hate to get this back as a 7.5 and realize I could have bumped it myself to an 8.0, but that's probably where I would land as an 8.0 for this book. And those are the kind of conditions that I think you can expect from quality comics. I, you're not going to, I hate to say like you get what you pay for, but you're not going to get a raw copy that is a 9.8 candidate because I do believe that they know what they're doing in terms of putting certain books available at auction starting at whatever it is a penny or 99 cents and then just letting the bidders dictate the market on these for them but i think this is great this is such a great book i'm happy to add this one to my collection and i'm going to leave it as an 8.0 so i'm going to go ahead and put the 8.0 with a clean and press indicator and that lets me know that it potentially has the ability to get up to I, again, I would say an 8.5 is probably where this tops out if I can get a couple of the creases out and get the back looking a little bit less yellow or less dirty. I think that it has a shot. And I will say this too, with examining some of the CGC slabs that I got back recently from Heritage Auctions, I was actually quite surprised at some of the grades that some of the books got where I flipped the slab over and the back of this Avengers 41 that I just showed you, uh, it was... I was seeing that that type of back cover, maybe not to the extent that this was, but that's what I'm saying. If I can get that initial layer off, that initial layer of dirt off, I mean, it. I don't see any reason why this would get an 8 or an 8.5. Okay, spent a lot of time on that first book, Avengers 41, but I just wanted to give you kind of a general idea of the quality of book. Now, it does depend on the scan. Not all books are the same, but I did find that as I was evaluating these, online at least, the conditions and the, the type of defects or the, the things that would prevent it from getting up into the, the mid nines tended to kind of be about the same. And uh, honestly, a lot of it had to do with the back cover. The next one is Avengers 35. And I'm loving picking up these older 
silver and early bronze age Avengers books. This one is just a, a such a vibrant, striking red background on this book. It's got Captain America falling over the ledge. He just needs to quickly grab on there and then he'll save himself, no problem. But very similar to Avengers 41, uh, I mean, there's going to be color breaks. There's one there right around the staple. And I would say this one's probably in a little bit of a worse shape, probably more in the sevens. I don't believe this would drop to a 6.5. It could be, however, like right at the top. Usually when I see that around the edge of the comic, that's when I start to consider the five to six sort of range. When the top and bottom edge of the comic just has that sort of rippling and, and starting to color break around there. To me, that's where I sort of draw the line. So it is possible this, this does drop into the the fine, fine plus sort of range. But I just felt like this is probably the most affordable way to acquire books like this in that mid to upper mid-grade condition. Next is Fantastic Four 73. And we've got this giant guest star bonanza. And I love these early, like really, really early Marvel like team-ups and crossover books like this. I mean, this is a Fantastic Four titled book. And we've got Spider-Man, Thor, and Daredevil all here on the cover alongside the Fantastic Four. The Invisible Woman or Invisible Girl at the time is not here, so she she's probably just invisible. I mean, I think she's... Oh, well, maybe that's her, like, right there or right there. I'm not sure. Maybe she's getting kind of between Thing and Thor. I don't, I'm not sure there. Uh, this one, although it's, it's a great book, it does have a little bit of tanning. It's almost like a vignette where the it, it's really kind of like off-white in the center of the book, and then there's a general tanning around the edges. But again, what I wasn't so much concerned about was if there's going to be tanning, like light tanning to cover, you see that grade from CGC every so often, I'm okay with that. It's not the most vibrant or striking, like ultra bone white presentation, and I know there's some boxes with lights that you can stick these in. I get that. I wasn't so much concerned with that. What I was looking for is trying to make sure that we've got as as neat or as clean a spine as possible. Uh, this one does have some color breaks right there. Two in the corner box in the green it is tough, and then a few there. So not perfect by any stretch, but it does avoid some of the other defects in the previous book where I feel like this one's probably maybe in the seven-ish range, 6.5 at worst, but probably more in the 6.5 to 7.5. I don't know if this gets all the way up to eight. Probably depends on the back. I assume that all of these, because of the types of books that I was looking at at the time, they all have, they all basically need some sort of general dry cleaning or wet cleaning along the back to just improve the back cover. But just at first glance in the bag and just kind of knowing what the other books are, maybe like a 775. Next, another Fantastic Four book, Fantastic Four 71. This one has all four members of the Fantastic Four, including Invisible Girl getting her own special corner of the cover here. Slightly miswrapped. We've got color breaks here. Again, probably looking at 6.5 to 7.5, although I see some creasing in here. So this one might even drop down into the 6 range, 6-ish. I don't believe we're going to drop below 6 here. So 6.0 to 7.0 on this Fantastic Four 71. Next is Marvel Team Up number 26. And not necessarily seeking these out specifically, but I do track them and I do want to respect the fact that this is going to be a tough book to really get in high grade. And you can see why with these color breaks right in here, especially right by the staple there. And I do see some light creasing, a little bit of spine curling around here that would require a press or two just to kind of get out. But I, I thought that overall, this one to me felt like it had a chance, unless there was something I completely missed, to be around a 9.0, possibly a 9.2. And sometimes these Marvel titled books, Marvel 2-in-1, Marvel Team-Up, Marvel Feature, Marvel Tales, sometimes those get a little bit overlooked because either they're reprints or they're just sort of side stories like this. But sometimes you can even find first appearances and keys in these. And I specifically bid on this one because I thought that this was a high grade copy. Now, here's something I just noticed. Every time I say, I, yeah, I bought this, I thought it was a good, nice, clean copy. There we've got the, that dog ear there that breaks color. So yeah, then you're like, eh, well, now we're down into the eights, uh, maybe eight five. But I think this is probably a book I would still even practice on to see if I could keep it 
up in a nine, but usually when you see those flaps and they, they it's just an, a, a line there that, that breaks color, you, it's tough for me to see that book getting anything above a 9.0, along with all of the other defects that typically come with a book like that. I also see a little bit in here that would need to be fixed and kind of smoothed out. That's Those sorts of things would come in a press, but maybe this book uh, maxes at an 8.5. Next is Amazing Spider-Man 234 versus Will of the Wisp, a John Romita Jr. cover. And it may not be like the, the greatest Amazing Spider-Man cover ever, but I do love that comic book feel where you've got that sort of printed grid going across the character there. And I really felt like this was a, a strong 9-2, 9-4 candidate when I looked at this, uh, the scans of this. And it looks to hold up. I think I'm noticing right in there is a little bit of a crease. And also right there, I think, is just a tiny, tiny color breaking tick. But strong corners, looks pretty good. Little bit of a overlap or corner hanging over that looks like it breaks color right there. But I've got a couple books to go hang out and see what some of these books I pay for. Some of them I paid a little bit more than I remembered I paid for them. And some of them I paid a lot less. And it's always interesting to me to see just what were those final bids on these books. So with these last two, we've got uh, two Fantastic Four books. This is Fantastic Four 85. I'm always looking to buy older Fantastic Four books and just absolutely surrounding all of those key Fantastic Four books that I don't have. When you're talking about First Galactus, First Black Panther, First Silver Surfer, but still great uh, Jack Kirby Fantastic Four books. This one looks to have some sort of issue right there on the edge where... Probably some color got lifted, almost like a, not necessarily a tape pull, but it almost looks like something's come up off of the, like some of the paper's been rubbed out there. But not bad, you know, again, looking at that maybe seven to eight, six, five, seven, five type of range. These are the kind of books that you can get from Heritage Auctions in like a lot of Fantastic Four, where it'd be like five Fantastic Four books and the average grade is the 6.0, 6.5. And I used to buy those from Heritage until I started finding them here as single issues on Hip Comic. And the last book is Fantastic Four 83. And just taking a look at the condition, yeah, probably again the same. It's almost like I could just blindly buy these and assign the grades because they're all around that 6.5 to 7.5 with a chance at getting into the 8.85 8, possibly, potentially, but realistically probably landing more around a 7.0. But I still feel like what I ended up winning these books at, it was very reasonable. When you're talking about, again, silver, early bronze, Marvel, superhero comics, that all could potentially even get a little bit of a grade bump with a delicate clean and press on these. Very happy to add these. Now, what I want to do is I want to compare what I paid against fair market value, and then maybe play around with some of the CGC grades to see, you know, if these were all like maybe in a five or a six or a seven, since I think they're all pretty similar, what would those values look like? All right, here are the books that I won from Quality Comics on Hip Comic back on December 22nd, 2022, and I was invoiced $128.06, and that was for the final bids for these books, plus $8.25 for shipping and handling. Uh, now, it definitely covered the shipping. I don't know about the handling, but I don't really see any damages to the books outside of what I would say the typical wear and tear. There's no damages to the board, so I don't think anything was damaged in shipment. So as long as that outer cardboard box stays intact, then the books are okay. Now, in terms of what I paid for these versus fair market value, I distribute the 825 across all of the books and then add them up. And if my math is correct, then the total of $128.06 will match what was on the invoice. And in this case, it does. And so now I can compare fair market value with the total cost to look and see if I added any value to my collection. Now, this is a great example of why cover price has become a little frustrating for me because they don't have a general fair market value of a book. It's all broken up by grade. So you do have to know the grade of the book in order to determine the fair market value. And I don't always have the grade in front of me. I, I don't have 
every book rated like we graded this one an 8.0. I haven't done that yet, so I want kind of a general assessment. So unfortunately, I don't think I can really get any insights or information on this order based on the raw books, just because like, for example, Avengers 35 cover price has this probably in a very fine or a near mint as $216. And then it probably falls off the table after that. So I'm going to skip over just comparing it because I, I just don't think it's fair that it's not like I, I bought a $200 book for 20. That's not what happened. What I'd rather do is look at more realistic grades. Now, the first thing I'll do, I, I'm not even going to bother with a 9.4 because these books were not listed in near mint condition. They specifically want you to look at the scan and grade it yourself. And I think that that's why a lot of the books end up going for a lot less than what they should is because there's no guidance at all as far as what even the seller thinks the grades of these books should be. So they end up taking a hit on that, I think. I'd rather see a book listed like Amazing Spider-Man 234 VF, and then you'd end up getting fair market value or around it for a VF copy of ASM 234 instead of maybe not even getting that. Uh, as you could see here, after shipping, my total cost to acquire that book was $3.28. And probably even in a VF or near mint minus, it's, it's probably at least a $5 book. So again, we're talking about $3 versus $5. But, you know, relatively speaking, if you were getting a $50 book for $30, then that sounds a little bit better. But in any case, what I want to do is uh, we'll jump ahead and do the fun part first, which is what if they were all 9.8s? Now, there's no shot that I don't think any of these have a shot at being a 9.8. But just so you could see what the value of the types of books that I was bidding on. And I like to see this because I want to know what what is the value of this book in the market just in general? Is there demand for the book? So the higher the 9.8 I think the more special or desirable the book is in general, and I'm a big believer in Rising Tide raises all ships, and Fantastic Four 71, looking at that in a 9.8 of $2,500, that means that if that book grades out somewhere in the 8s, 8.5, that's a very, very valuable uh, book to have, and so that's kind of how I look at it. When you look at Marvel Team Up 9.8 at 168, you know, I... Yeah, I acquired it for $4.28. That that sounds about right. <laughs> so again, it's not really a matter of do I think these are 9.8s. I just want to see what is the ceiling, what is the cap, what is the market for this book in that higher grade. Now, ASM 234, if I'm going to put some realistic grades down, I feel like, yeah, that's it's probably more in the 9.2 range than anything. I, I don't believe that it's a 9.8. I did see a couple of, of defects that would probably prevent it, but Maybe it jumps all the way to a 9.6. It's possible. So a 9.2 is 52. 9.6 is 42. It's the way that some of these books go when there's not a whole lot of data. But uh, since 9.2 is more valuable, let's put it back to that just for fun. I don't know. It's somewhere around 40 bucks, 50 bucks. But this is why I bid on it because I, it cost me $3.28 to get the book. And even in a 9.2, having roughly a $50 value. That's a $16 value add if I were to send the book out for professional grading. And 9.4 is a few dollars more. So yeah, that seems to be about right, around, around $40 to $50 range. Now, if you're looking at the years, this is why I'm giving the 1982 book a shot at a 9.2. I don't think any of the others have a shot at a 9. And I think what I was saying is it's most of them are falling in that 6.5 to 7.5 range. It's possible that one of them slipped all the way down to a 6. But let's see, if these are all 6.5s, what are we talking about here? Do any of these have value? And yeah, some of them do. Uh, Marvel Team Up 26, I think we talked about that as a 9.8 having, you know, so it's, it's like that, it's like $125 9.8 of that era where it's just sort of a non-key, not highly collected or desirable series. And that's just kind of the way it is. So that one I expect not to have a lot of value in a 6.5. I don't know if that one. I think I think I was willing to give that one a 9 or something like that. Or let's just move it to 9 just to be on the safe side. So it $45 and a 9. Okay. I think that was that's that's kind of fair. Maybe it drops an 8.5. But a 6.5 on the others still has pretty decent value in a worst case. And, and I'm always looking for a worst case scenario. <laughs> Where it's like, okay, if I made a huge mistake in acquiring this, is there a way to get my money back? Is it possible? And if all of these grayed out at 6.5 in a worst case, yeah, it's kind of a money back situation. A little bit of a wash once you put your time into this. 
a $23 value add for Fantastic Four 73 and a 6.5. Fantastic Four 71 is a loss. Fantastic Four 85, $12.78 gain. So it's, you know, give or take five, ten dollars here or there per book for a grand total of a value add of $98.96. That again, that's assuming the team up is a 9.0 at 45 and 52 for a 9.2 of 234. And then just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and cap these out at a 7.5 and see if any of them change in value. And it looks like, yeah, a little bit of a an increase. So if I'm a really harsh overgrader and you know we're we're dealing more with seven fives here, we've got a nice CGC value add of $97.62 on that Fantastic 473 up to a CGC value of 160 and the Fantastic 485 at $112 for that 7.5. So not too bad overall a CGC value add potential, I would say, of around $250 for an order like this. And that's really if we're talking about giving each one a light clean, a light press to kind of make sure they're up into the sevens, maybe get lucky one of them is in an eight, but really just kind of on average about a 7.5, just to be fair and to be honest. And I think that's a pretty decent value add. It, what I'm struggling with is the time that it takes me really to kind of go through all of the auctions and look at all of the scans. And I'm not looking at every scan. I'm really honing in on certain titles. Like, I mean, you can't get any more mainstream than Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and Avengers. I was just missing an X-Men book in that stack as far as Marvel mainstream goes from Silver and, and Bronze Age. But I want to spend the time with these books. I don't want them to go in a pile. Like if I'm looking at uh, Avengers 41 that I said was an 8 and I didn't even look up the grade of it an 8, there, I'm just trying to get through the values and get through this, this spreadsheet assessment. I want to take more time with my comics and I'm almost in a way punishing myself. I'm not letting myself buy any more books. I feel very comfortable with my budget. I feel like the comics that I buy are a good investment. I feel like, again, in a worst case scenario, I could turn these back around and get a, about my money back. But I would like to think that I could make a few dollars with these types of investments when I'm buying mid to upper mid grade Silver Age books for about 17 bucks each. I, I don't feel like that's that's really overspending or overpaying. But I, th I think I am going to just cut myself off for a while and really just see if I can take time and just appreciate what I have and appreciate these books and making sure I'm being fair and honest with myself as far as what I want to collect, fair and honest with the grades that I'm giving the books. Because I find no greater joy than sitting and looking through a bin of comic books and taking them out of the bag and board and kind of get back to the, the joy of being able to rebag and board these and put them specifically where they need to go in a short box and appreciate the receiving of these comic books and spend less time online going from store to store. And that's what I've decided to do. Take a little bit of a break from my buying and taking a little bit more time with gratitude and appreciation. And I think I'll feel better. My wallet will feel better. And I think overall my collection will be better for it. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.